Hello everybody, I'm Nick, and this video I'm going to take a look at how we can use the retry policy of the new Git package poly. This video is part of my new series where I'm going to go through every single new Git package that's worth using in your professional life. And I'm going to be breaking it down and explaining how you can use this. And in this first video, we're going to take a look at the retry policy of poly. Before that, I want to remind you that until the 1st of February 2020, I'm running a giveaway in collaboration with JetBrains, giving away 5 free 1 year keys for JetBrains Rider. This is the ID I am using and many of you have been asking, so I thought we might just do a giveaway. So you have until the 1st of February 2020 to use the link in the description down below to sign up for the giveaway. All you need to do is fill that form, be subscribed and have the sub notification bell ringed and that's it. This video is part of my Essential Nougat Packages series, so if you don't want to miss any episodes, please subscribe and ring the sub notification bell to get notified when I upload a new episode. So we're going to go and jump straight into the code, and I'm going to show you what I have, and then I'm going to explain to you what I'm trying to achieve. So first things first, I have my uh, application running, this is a web API, and I'm going to show you the code in just a second, but first I want to do is show you what this does, and essentially, I'm using my GitHub username here, and click send, to get all the information about my GitHub profile. This is just public information and I can use any other user here. And as you can see, I'm getting that. And if it doesn't exist and it's something random, I'm going to get a 404. So basic API stuff. Let me just put that back here. So that's it. But because that call is going from my web API to the GitHub API, we have a dependency there. And what I want to make sure is if for some reason the GitHub API doesn't respond, I'm retrying the transient error to ensure that it wasn't just a flaky HTTP call. And the way I'm doing it currently, let me just show you the controller. This is all I have in the controller, so I'm injecting an I GitHub service here, and then I'm just calling using the username. And if the user is not null, I'm saying OK, and the user. And if the user is null, I'm just returning not found. And what's in this method? Uh, it's actually a, a bit of code. Let's take a look. So we're using the HTTP client factory to create the GitHub client. And then I have a max retries constant up here. I'm saying up to three times. And what I'm saying is, okay, our GitHub user is null. Now, while the retries left is more than zero. So while I'm still retrying, go in here and then try to make a call to the GitHub API with the user's endpoint and the username. The reason why I have this here is to give it a, a sense of flakiness. Obviously, the GitHub API is a very robust API it's, and it's unlikely to have a transient error. So for me to demonstrate that there is an issue, I made this random check here where we have a 50% chance that this will just throw an HTTP request exception, which is what a flaky API would return. And then as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm checking the status code. And if the status code is not found, which is what GitHub returns when a user doesn't exist, then I'm breaking out of the loop because that's not a transient error. This is a clear message saying that what you're looking for is not there. And I'm just returning it. And because it's null, it will return not found. But if it does have something, then I'm going to read it as a string and deserialize it as a GitHub user, which is just a POCO object with all those properties. And I'm breaking again and I'm returning the user. If there is an exception, at this point it will be a transient exception. And I'm just going to decrease my retry count to from 3 to 2 and from 2 to 1. And I'm going to say that if retry is left is 0, then finally throw this exception because after 3 retries I wasn't able to actually hit the GitHub API. And this is fine, but as you can tell, there is quite a lot of code here. And really, this is not really reusable. If I extract this and try to use it for a separate method, it's not as elegant of a solution as you can imagine. And here's where Poly comes into place. Poly is a new Git package under the .NET Foundation where you can just use it to make very elegant retry policies. And it has way more policies, which we will see every single one of them. But we're going to start with retry. As always, you can find all the code in the description down below. So the first thing I want to do is stop this API from running. And I'm going to go ahead in my uh, project and I'm going to say manage NuGet packages. And I'm going to type poly. And now I'm going to click this. This is the first package you see, poly. And I'm going to add it to my uh, system. And what I need to do is I will go here and I'm going to say private read only. And I'm going to create an async retry policy that returns a GitHub user. 
and I'm gonna name this just retry policy and I'm gonna initialize it in my constructor I could initialize it here but because my screen is so large now uh, you wouldn't be able to see it properly so I'm just gonna do it here it's the same thing essentially and uh, here I'm gonna say policy which is where how you create a policy in poly and we're gonna say handle so we want to handle something with that policy and what we're trying to handle here is the HTTP request exception so we're telling poly that this is what you're gonna handle in case that happens and after that I can say retry and because this is an async call I'm gonna say retry async and I'm gonna start with that now and I'm gonna show you what other types of retries we have and I'm gonna say uh, what this is expecting for me is a number and that number is the max retries so I'm gonna say just max retries here and the reason that is uh, failing is because I did not specify uh, the return type of that policy which is the github user so in that single line we just created our retry policy which says that handle this HTTP request exception retry for up to three times and if this is exhausted then simply throw the exception I'm gonna show you how we can replace this code here to use that policy I'm just gonna copy that policy here and let's just move it down a little bit and here's where we're gonna start writing our code so we have um, what creates the HTTP client using the HTTP client factory if you don't know what the HTTP client factory is you can click the top right corner of your screen right now to check that video that I made about the HTTP client factory so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say retry policy and then I'm gonna do dot and I'm gonna say execute async and this is how you essentially wrap your call and you execute it using that policy and because it's an async I can actually do async in here in the lambda so I have to create a lambda expression and in these square brackets is where I'm gonna put the code that calls the API so the equivalent would be this all the way to here and I'm gonna have to change it a little bit because that one was using a loop so instead of break we're gonna say return null here and instead of setting the github user I'm gonna say return here and really once I just do return and await that's the code that's it and I can go ahead and delete all that actually to the yeah until the end I don't need it anymore and this is all the code in our method now using the retry policy and I can show you it's using it because if I just run this real quick going back here I'm gonna send this request and as you can see now this failed because it actually exhausted all three times you, I think you need like 25% chance that this will happen so if I do it again it will probably not happen as you can see yeah now it's working now it's working because the retries are happening uh, but if you see that exception it means that the retries were exhausted and we finally throw the exception if I try it enough times uh, it will happen however the actual github API is unlikely to fail now let me show you why I think this is a great thing and a great upgrade from the previous uh, loop that we had and mainly that is the reusability aspect as you saw here I specifically specified the github user to imitate how specific the policy was to that previous loop but we don't actually need that I can go ahead and delete it and now suddenly this thing is not tied to a specific type and I can simply reuse it for other calls so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste it again here and I'm gonna say uh, let me create a new method here which returns a list of a github user and such a method will be the get um, users from org async and by providing uh, an org name an organization on github I'm able to get a list of github users uh, so if I just use that in my deserialization code and here I say orgs an org name and of course I'll, I'll remove the flakiness check here I don't need that now I just reused the exact same retry policy for another call in my system and I can go ahead and create that in the interface if I want to use it um, and why not let's just use it so I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna quickly just add the endpoint here so orgs get users in org and I'm gonna call the method and just change this to org name and just here 
and now I can just use that thing which internally will use the exact same retry policy. And this retry policy is very box standard, you know, we're trying uh, without checking anything in the uh, request exception, but I could very much do. What I can do here, if I want to make me, my exception handling more specific, is I can actually say, let's take a look into that lambda, and let me tell you exactly, we're using a predicate, when I want you to do something about it, uh, or not to do. So in our scenario here, we have this random next, which says that this is a fake request exception. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually tell my policy to not handle an exception that has this message. So what I'll do is I'm gonna say, actually, let me just remove the uh, Lambda because it confuses me. And I'm gonna say exception dot message is not, this is a fake exception. And what this does, actually, let me just expand it. And what this does is it tells my policy to not handle this exception and just throw if its message is like this. And you can have more complex things here that allows you to just narrow down the scope of the exception that you want to handle. Now, retrying for a fixed amount of times is very bog standard, but how can we expand upon retrying? Well, there's actually a couple of more ways you can retry here. Uh, Another one is the retry for everything, where we don't specify uh, for how long we want to retry. We just say, you know what, just keep retrying until you get a valid request back. Now, obviously, in a fail fast scenario, this is not a good idea to do. But if you know that this API will, in fact, return if you keep retrying, potentially because of a 429 request uh, limiting reasons, then you can just stay here and retry forever without specifying a number. Another good example is the wait and retry thing where we have a back off period where we say retry for a max number of three retries, but also have a sleep duration provider. And um, this I that you see here is the, the times that we retried. And you can say time span dot from second is one. And what this will do is it will tell the system that retry once, then wait for one second, then retry again and wait again for another second and retry again. And then it goes on. And the reason why it gives us the times is because we can also do exponential retries where you can first retry for a small amount of time. And then if we're not getting a response back, we can just say, okay, we retried for a hundred milliseconds now. Now we're gonna wait for 200 milliseconds. And in the next one, we're gonna wait for 500 milliseconds. Let me just show you how you can quickly do that. We can simply change this call to uh, from seconds to uh, from milliseconds. Let me just push it down so you can see it. And I'm gonna get the times, which is the number of times we uh, retried. And in this scenario, it's max three. And I'm gonna say multiply that by 100. So if it's one, it's gonna be 100 milliseconds. If it's two, it's gonna be 200. If it's three, it's gonna be 300. So you're gonna retry for maximum of three tries with a bigger back off period as we go. This is another very common pattern that you'll see. And of course, because I have this check here, uh, let me just add the breakpoint and I'm gonna run this application to show you exactly how this uh, thing works. And in fact, I'm gonna add one here as well. My application is running and I'm gonna click send Hoping, hoping we're getting an exception and in fact we did get an exception as you can see the exception is here and I have all the information for my exception which means I can act on anything what I want to act on is the message and the message is in fact what you can see here which is this is a fake request exception so we're going to disregard it and we're going to return at this point anyway the exception but if I stop this and I remove this check and say okay yes handle it and retry on it then when i run this you will see that the back off period is actually working and i'm gonna go ahead and click that hoping i'm getting an exception here you go there was an exception so it tells you that the first time we're retrying is this one so the time span will be one multiplied by 100 and if i run it oh it happened again retrying for a second time now it's 200 milliseconds and if i retry again Oh, it didn't fail a third time, so we did get our response back and everything is working. So this is retrying in Poly. It's very straightforward and it's very elegant and very easy. Poly is a package I've used in every single project and probably every single company I've worked for. 
and it's a must have in your technical tool set so this is just retrying i'm going to take you through every single policy in the next videos so make sure you subscribe for those that's all i had for you for today thank you very much for watching special thanks to my github sponsors for making these videos possible if you want to support me as well you will find the link in the description down below leave a like if you like this video subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well to get notified when i upload a new episode and i'll see you in the next video keep coding